Both Do He and Gu Wan came out alive from the burning and collapsing convenience store because of the comeback of Gu Wan's tattoo and power. The Lady God could not believe this was possible. At home, Gu Wan is using his power excitedly. He is back to his old self again. Do He watches Gu Wan admire himself, but worriedly, Gu Wan asks Do He if she is okay. He carried Do He to the sofa and told her to rest, but she assures him that she is fully recovered and can go back to work. Against Gu Wan's will, Do He prepares to go back to work. Because Gu Wan doesn't want Do He to be tired, he helps her choose her outfit. After trying on a couple of outfits, they ended up having a matching outfit. They take a walk outside to go to work. When they arrive at the office, the employees notice Gu Wan's glowing aura, resulting in his good mood. A cake to celebrate Gu Wan's new birthday with a candle on top is prepared by Gu Wan using his powers. They ate the cake together, feeding each other. At the Sunwell Foundation, the wild dogs gathered to greet their boss. Gu Wan is signing all the documents in his office when emotional Bok Ju tells him not to die because of all his loans that need to be paid. Then Gu Wan tells him his powers are back, but Bok Ju already knew it because Ga Young had already told him. As a demon again, Gu Wan needs to make a deal. He went to an elderly man who wishes to go back to his younger self because his dying wife, who has Alzheimer's, only remembers her young husband. But while watching them bid farewell to each other, Gu Wan's tears started to fall. He is making an excuse as to why he cried when he witnessed how the two elderly humans said their goodbyes to each other. Do he asks Gu Wan about his deal, and he replies that he didn't make it. She wants to catch the culprit now that Gu Wan's power is back. They recall each one who knew about their trip to Sokcho, and they ended up suspecting Da Jing because of his awkward behavior lately. They followed Da Jing into the river, then saw a man holding a box of apples sits beside Da Jing. Holding her cell phone to take evidence, they slowly approached Da Jing and the man from behind. But suddenly, the two started kissing each other, and Gu Wan recognized the man. It was Bok Ju. Inside the car, the two confessed that it all started when Gu Wan called Bok Ju to take care of the drunk Da Jing. Because of embarrassment and her former failed relationship, Da Jing wants to keep their relationship a secret. Before going to sleep, Gu Wan teases Do He with a romantic but funny entrance to the bedroom with him biting a piece of rose. Do He playfully dodges Gu Wan's attempt to be near her. Once again, Gu Wan dreams of the woman sword dancing. He puts the necklace around her neck. Searching for answers, he goes to the Lady God and asks her why he is still dreaming of the woman named Wolsham, a memory from when he was a human. The Lady God told him that maybe he wants to remain a human, and fate may repeat itself one way or another. A surprise visit from Sok Min at the office puts all the people on guard. He offers to invest in Doohee's projects, but she declines, not wanting to have a debt from him. A family picture of Doohee when her mother was still pregnant with her and with her father and the chairman was given to her by Sok Min. Then Gu Wan came and teased Sok Min to call him brother. Sok Min notices the tattoo on Gu Wan's wrist is back. A memory of when she was still young and could not sleep in the chairman's mansion crosses Doohee's mind. The chairman, too, could not sleep, so they both drank milk. Doohee told the story of her parents passing to Gu Wan and why she resent herself after that incident on her 11th birthday. She also wishes him to receive a hug from Gu Wan and to not leave her side ever again. Another visit from Sok Hoon, making sure that Doohee is fine after the accident. They talked about what Sok Hoon witnessed that day, and he plans to get closer to Sok Min to know what he is up to. Sok Hoon goes to Sok Min to have dinner and tells him that he wants to be his ally. He started to spy on them, trying to sneak into a room, but was hindered by Sok Min. As soon as he leaves Sok Min's house, he calls Doohee and reports about Da Kyung's suspicious absence and what he saw in the room, Gu Wan's demon book. But Sok Min watched Sok Hoon on the CCTV and saw him making a call as soon as he stepped outside. Du Kyung, on the other hand, is hysterical because of the pain when Sok Min enters, and tells him to surrender himself to the chairman's murder and do his attempted murder after he recovers because he failed to prove himself once again. Gu Wan and Du He teleported to the room where the demon's manual was, but the book was already gone. Luckily, they escaped getting caught by Seira. The cell phone used by the killer got Gu Wan's attention, and he showed it to Do He. Do He wants to find out where Do Kyung is. At the police station, Detective Park and O are trying to figure out who the mastermind was in all of the killings and attempted killings involving Do He and Gu Wan. All of a sudden, 
Do Kyung enters the station and admits to the killings. Do He and Gu Won immediately went to the police station. They teleported inside the investigation room, and Do He asked Do Kyung if he was really the one who ordered the murder of the chairman. He answers that the killer doesn't have to do with the murder of Chun Suk. He told them that the devil inside of him ordered him to kill her. Sok Hoon talks with Do He and Gu Won about Do Kyung's confession. Then, Sok Hoon invites Gu Won to have a drink with him. He asks Gu Won about his true feelings for Do He. Meanwhile, Gu Young is contemplating entering the building and meeting Do He. They too have a drink outside. Gu Won takes Sok Hoon home because of drunkenness. He uses his power to heal Sok Hoon's injury. When Gu Won arrives home, Do He is in the living room drinking tea. Gu Won smells alcohol from Do He. Once again, Gu Won dreams of Wolsham, and it is none other than Do He. He was so in love with her, but it turns out he was the one who killed her. 